Oh dear viewers, I've done it again. Whilst I'm here at Langley Prestige in Chelmsford, driving some other cars for sensible second-hand reviews, I've been naughty and I've taken the opportunity to take out this 2019 Honda Civic 1 litre EX CVT. Welcome to Contingency Reviews. So the Mark 10 Honda Civic was launched around the beginning of 2017 for our market. It had been available in some of the markets earlier. And that lasted until the summer or early autumn of 2022. This is the basic engine that was available in the 10th generation Civic, a one litre three cylinder with 129 PS. I'm going to be using the PS figures uh, because they're a little bit easier to find online. With this uh, CVT transmission that's really not the worst CVT that I've ever used, uh, the car goes from 0 to 60 in about 11 seconds or so. It's incredibly smooth, really smooth. There's even an economy mode here which limits my power and I'm actually in that mode now. The quoted figures for fuel consumption were around 60 miles per gallon, even with this CVT transmission, which is remarkable. I think it was about 110 grams per kilometre CO2 on the old NEDC cycle as well. The EX was the more luxurious um, of the one litre models. There was also an S was so basic you didn't get a rear wiper or a radio I've heard as well. The SE which was the sort of starting point in a range for most people because you've got a rear wiper and radio. Then the SR which looked quite sporty. Um, Simon from Lanley Prestige in Chelmsford where um, I borrowed this car from today did have an SR for sale a while ago and he said it looked a lot better than this. I, I prefer this person with his EX um, because it's a bit more luxurious. But yeah, it looks good as well. Then this EX, it was the top of the range with things like leather seats and blind spot monitoring and uh, other exciting things. With the 1.5 litre models, the, um, the range was a bit different. That engine generated 182 PS. Rather than this three-cylinder, it's a four-cylinder. Both power plants were actually brand new for this model of Civic. The previous one had um, some normally aspirated 1.8 and 1.4 and 1 engines. I have driven that one of those actually. I actually sourced one for a client, um, which was a while ago now, around. Uh, 2021 I think late 2021 I did that job and that was pretty good a very late one of those the Tora model with this Mark 10 Civic it's only actually possible to buy either this hatchback the five door hatch or the saloon now the saloon is very rare I don't think they made it after a 2019 facelift and they had the same engines, the uh, one litre 1.5. Also, if you were absolutely and totally bonkers, you could go for a two litre with 320 PS in the Type R model, known as the FK8. I'm sure many of you have heard of that. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and uh, all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. For some reason my blind spot monitoring just went off then. All I can say about a driving experience of this car is it's very, very smooth. It's incredibly smooth. It's very flat and the cornering is minimal body roll. The suspension is actually remarkably compliant. As you're driving along you also get these uh, green lights that come on to tell you where economically you're driving. 
it goes from green to white and green to white depending on how um, much you want to press on also this car's got adjustable suspension why you need adjustable suspension in a one litre Honda Civic I don't know but uh, well just to see if we put the active dampers on it makes any difference at all um, it's just made the ride firmer uh, it makes it all jiggly uh, let's turn that off that's better so yeah I, I don't think really if you didn't have the adapted damping system that you you'd really kind of miss it too much but this car's got it yeah driving position is very very good it, it's it's a very low driving position and I really like that I like sitting low in cars um, it feels like you could do lots and lots and lots of miles in this car without really any problems. The biggest issue I'm having is the stupid climate control system, which is like so many other modern cars, where you don't have physical buttons for all the climate controls. I wanted just a fan, and I had to go into a separate menu to do that. And you can turn it on and off, but you can't actually adjust the speed without going into a touchscreen, which I think is silly. I also would prefer the six-speed manual. Um, obviously, Simon doesn't have the six-speed manual at the moment. The previous SR model yet was a six-speed. And that gearbox, I seem to recall, is really, really sweet. This car's it's absolutely fine. It's not a problem, but I know the manual is better. Maybe one of these days I'll get to drive that, and uh, my wish will be fulfilled. It's really strange with this Mark 10 Civic. It kind of looks like the Type R version was designed first and then the other versions like this more standard EX model were kind of just, I don't know, very much the afterthought because it, it looks very much like a Type R, it's just has been a little bit sort of, I don't know, kind of toned down a bit. And maybe that's not so much of a problem for you. I personally would prefer the saloon version of this because I'm that sort of person. Bizarrely, the S model, the base model of these, doesn't come with a rear wiper. There's also other things it doesn't come with, but a rear wiper is one of them. And I think you need that on such a large bit of glass. Rear visibility is not amazing, but it's better than the previous Mark 9 Civic. I think it is actually, in the context of today's cars, quite a nice looking car, particularly in a bold colour like this. The Mark 11 does look even better, in my opinion, than the new one. That's a very stylish car indeed, but I think it's more sort of an evolution of, uh, of this design rather than anything entirely new with no reference before, which is what a lot of Civics have done over the years. So yes, with these uh, 210 alloy wheels and a little bit of extra chrome on the side of it, I think it looks good. Let's have a look inside the boot. There's actually two boot sizes for this car. This one litre has 478 litres of space, which is really big. And it has this really strange parcel shelf arrangement. Um, or load blind or whatever. I can't remember how to take this off. I'll have to, I'll have to fiddle with it with two hand or something. It should, it should just come out. I don't know why it's not doing that. Um, but the idea is you can sort of put it that way. Um, to one side or fit it the other way around, whatever you want. But maybe that's a two handed job and I've only got one hand. So we're going to have to do that later. One really strange thing about this car is that even if you lift up here, you can see we've got potentially space for lots and lots of stuff under there, but I don't think you get the spare wheel as standard at all. I, I'm not sure you can get a spare wheel on this car, which is really bad, but wouldn't be unique in that sort of way for um, that not to be available in a car like this. That's uh, it's a right faff with one hand doing that. Um, 
We've got a power outlet there, which is good. Boot lights over here. There's also like a second bit of a parcel shelf up here uh, that you can sort of take off if you want as well. It makes, when that's in place, it makes it really annoying to fit a dealer plate to the back window. Um, that wasn't my favourite thing to do. Um, but you can see it sort of slipping as I was driving earlier on. I would go personally, if I wanted one of these cars, for a model like this, which has the uh, parking sensors and reversing camera. Obviously the base model doesn't get that at all. I think it's locked itself because I've got the key in my hand here. Got keyless entry on this one. Yeah, because the rear visibility is not, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great at all. Keyless entry on this particular one. Yeah, we're going to have to open the door, aren't we? All right, okay. Oh, I, hate, I hate cars that lock themselves when you walk away with the key. I think that's very dangerous, personally. But there we go. Honda aren't unique in that. Okay, let's see if we can get in the back. Can I adjust the seat to my driving position? I'm about 5 foot 11. It is a bit cramped in here, though. Um, the thing is, you have to adjust the seat right the way down to get the position of pedals right. So if you're the driver, that's amazing. But if there's anybody behind you, they're going to struggle, as I am. I've put one foot out the door. Okay, that's all right then. And, yeah, it's a bit dark in here, particularly with this dark headliner, which I'm... I'm just not a fan of hot cars with dark headliners. I think they make the interior very, very sort of somber. Mind you, the materials do feel very nice. You've got a little speaker in the door. We've got a big door pocket down there. Um, it's actually sort of softer material here. It has got hard plastic door tops in the back, but so is a goal for the lay on and everything else. So no problem there. Well, the Octavia is probably the closest thing in terms of the size of this car actually I would say to compare it against. Very heavily tinted glass as well as you can as you can see from inside. Cup holders here in the central armrest which is nice. You can fold the seat 60-40 if you want. Base model I think you might not even have 60-40 split seats which is very strange. The courtesy light though in the back which isn't a given on all cars so that's nice. Uh, map pockets as well either side. And then there's a big sort of um, centre console thing there. Unfortunately, you don't seem to get a 12 volt socket or a USB port in the back, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, let's go sit in the front. I think that's probably the best place to be. It's actually quite a low car, and I can see in a way why they weren't able to fit the previous model's magic seats in the back that have been of the previous two generations of Civics. We've got adjustable lumbar there. I've put the seat in the position that I prefer. I've adjusted the steering wheel, and that is a very comfy driving position indeed. Power folding mirrors, electric windows all round. Kind of, I think, fake stitching um, in here rather than real stitching, which actually is repeated here as well, which is a bit of a shame, but that's not the end of the world, is it really? Now, you can adjust this whole section here back and forth. You can. I think you can lift this up as well, I might not be pulling the right one, there you are. Yes, you've got USB port down there, which is fantastic. And lots and lots and lots of space, cup holder there. I think if you put this forward, you can sort of rest of the stuff in there. Why you only get one cup holder though, is a bit of a mystery, because this is a, a car with up to four passengers, never mind. There are the um, climate controls and the central touchscreen. We'll have a look at that in a moment. I would prefer to go for the lighter colour leather on this trim. You can get lighter colour leather than this. Uh, we'll just lift the interior a little bit for me. One thing I noticed straight away is that we've got side curtain airbags in here. I'll just sort of show the one this side because that's actually a bigger writing. And we've got so many safety systems in here. We'll run through some of them on the central touchscreen in a moment, but I can see why this car scored a five star rating at Euro NCAP. We've got, you know, things like um, adaptive cruise control, I think that is there. We've got lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring I mentioned before. 
there's just tons and tons and tons of safety features, tons of emergency braking, the list goes on. Uh, because this is an EX, we get rear cross traffic alert as well. Just on and on and on. So if we turn the car on, pressing that button there, won't start the engine though. Yes, I know I don't want to. I don't want to start the engine. What's the problem? Right. So we went back to, to load up. Yes. Oh, shut up! I'm going to close the door, aren't I? Hold on a second, viewers. Okay, that was very annoying. I'm going to open the window so I can turn off the climate control. Be a bit quieter for all of you. As you can see, you can operate the heating ventilation controls without entering the touchscreen, which is brilliant. And, uh, you know, there's the heated rear window and the heated mirrors. That's for recirculation. And you can turn it on off, as I've just done, to turn the fans off. Also got a multi-stage heated seat, which is nice, and dual zone. The individual heater controls are there. But if you want to actually adjust the fan speed, you have to go into here and do it there. Or adjust the uh, direction of the air, you've got to do it in here. I'll just put it onto one. So it just uh, keeps me cool whilst I'm doing this because it is quite warm outside today. It's about 23 degrees, or no, but nowhere near as warm as it has been recently. Right, that's better. God, my autofocus is annoying. So let's have a look at the uh, main system here. We've got a home, uh, we've got navigation, we've just seen that, audio, phone. You can actually use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which I would personally do because this touchscreen system is not the best. I think some of the later ones from this um, 69 plate car do have a slightly better entertainment system than this one. Uh, I certainly hope so because it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Right, uh, home again. That is a home system. Where do I get into I think information? Right, let's see if we can uh, actually get to. Hold on a second, views. Okay, yeah, this is this isn't a great system to be honest. It is very confusing. Right, menu. Okay, right, system device information. I want to go to clock adjustment others. I want to, I want to find where the safety systems are. Just hold on a moment. Right, I found out what to do. You have to swipe left on the system. Gosh, this is confusing. You can have other apps on here there's an app called aha on here not the name of the band you can add those in smart mode connections and auto app a car play if you definitely need right vehicle there it is goodness me okay we've got all sorts of things in here we've got uh, things like keyless access setup the driver assistant setup um so yeah traffic sign recognition adaptive Cruise control, beep, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, um, road departure mitigation setting, adaptive cruise control, prediction control. We've got all sorts of safety systems here, so many of them. Fortunately, you can sort of adapt some of them, but I prefer even more buttons than we have for things like the adaptive cruise control and down there, the lane keeping assist, just to turn some of this off. And then I think that's the um, collision warning as well. So all very safe and all very high tech, but oh my gosh, that's a bad system. <laughs> I'm not surprised they change it on later cars, and, and the new model has a completely different system in it. So we'll go back to the main menu and just leave that alone, that'll be fine. Let's have a look on here and see what we can do. I think we go left and right on this, or do we do something else? <sighs> Hold on a second, viewers. Right, so phone's not connected, of course. Uh, the instrument display, at the moment, is white. If I start the car, can I do this with one hand? Yes. You can see the instrument's currently white. If I was driving along and behaving myself, uh, that would be green at the top. And if I was just driving kind of uh, moderately, it would be white and green. White is bad, apparently. So we can go up and down here and look at some of the radio settings and things like that. That doesn't seem there doesn't need to be much else that I can really do with uh, with that. I think we can go over to um, this, which is um, changing from miles per hour to kilometres an hour if I want to. Um, 
and then there's other settings in here uh, that's to do with uh, oil change. It is, it is a bit of a difficult thing to navigate, to be honest. This, I, uh, to be honest with you, is I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to how to do this. It's not, it's not intuitive at all. That's to do with how many seat belts are in the back. Um, that is to do, I think, with. Yes, there we go. Spe speed limit warnings, which is annoying. I think I would turn those off. Uh, also got here. I actually know what that one is. This is to do with navigation. No, I don't want that one. That one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, navigation. I'm doing this for you, so you don't have to. Um, that is a trip meter. Uh, and that one, I think, is some fuel economy. Right, that is that is enough. <laughs> I am happy to be not looking at that. So we looked at the centre console. Door pockets are quite big, actually. They, they are nice and big. Let's turn the engine off. We don't need that on at the moment. See if we can get my secret mission documents into the glove box. No. Because of course not. Let's take the manual out. Oh, it's... <laughs> Look at the size of this manual. Right. Yes! I'm very relieved now, viewers. I'm also relieved about the fact we've got an electric sunroof in here. See the controls up here are uh, exciting. And we've got a little thing for clipping things in there. I don't see a sunglasses compartment there, which would be quite useful on a day like today, but uh, never mind. Let's have a look at the engine, shall we? Before we do that, I've just noticed we've got an HDMI connector here and another USB port, which is handy. And also, on some models, you can get this as a wireless charging pad, which is uh, it's handy. Right, now let's look at the engine. So here we go, viewers. As you can see, we've only got three uh, little coil packs, or whatever they are on here, because it's only a three-cylinder engine. Uh, one litre VTEC turbo with Earth Dreams technology developing 129 PS, which is pretty good for a little one litre like this. I think the uh, most powerful one litre that I know was the 155 um, Ford Eco Boom engine. But this is very unlikely to go boom. Uh, British built Civic, this one. Some of the previous generations had different Civic models for different markets. For the 10th generation one, this Mark 10, they were all unifying into one, although they were still built in different places. And we'll, we'll look at actually where they were built a little bit later on. But um, it is a bit complicated, even if it's just a one litre, just so many little kind of plugs and whatever. It's actually not got a big plastic cover on the engine, which is interesting. Um, in these days of just covering everything up. But yeah, that does look a little bit complicated to, uh, to work on. <laughs> but you shouldn't have to worry too much about it anyway. These do have a very good reputation for reliability. Anyway, that's really quite enough of me waffling on, isn't it? Um, let's go have another drive, shall we? Lloyd Living Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. It is a really lovely car to drive this. It's very easy and smooth and quiet. The driving position is really good. I've got a foot rest. I'm just gonna leave these adaptive dampers alone um, and stay away from the sport mode, which makes my light go permanently white. I want my green light on. I want to know that I'm doing something for the planet. So uh, I'll stay away from the adaptive dampers, I'll stay away from the sport mode and we'll just drive in a really kind of relaxed fashion. It's just really nice, you know, get really good fuel economy up to 60 miles per gallon or something like that. You know, I, what, more could you, uh, what more could you ask for really? We'll just be naughty and try this sport mode again. Oh no, it's gone permanently white, I can feel the gear ratios or simulated ratios of the CVT have kind of changed a bit. Put on the adaptive damping. 
which just makes everything feel an awful lot firmer. Yeah, let's turn all that stuff off, don't need any of that, and leave it in the eco mode. And just go along and enjoy the kind of nimble chassis this car has without a care in the world. Certainly, it, it's more akin to the Master 3 that I tried last time. I was at Lonely Prestige than anything else I think I've driven for a long time. Is this better than the Master 3? I don't know. I'm not sure. So viewers, the Honda Civic Mark 10, is this a car which you should consider? Well, the best thing about this car is the way that it drives. It's very smooth and quiet and refined, but also it's very nicely set up for the driver, particularly if you had the six speed manual. It feels really stable and planted, but also the ride is nice and comfortable, which is ideal really for everyday use. I'm not so fond of this infotainment system. I think that's not great. I'm not surprised that later Civic models have a better one. In addition to the S, S, E, S, R in the X models on the one litre, there was also um, an EX Sport and an EX Sport line, uh, special editions, I think. With the 1.5, it was, of course, the Sport, Sport Plus and the Prestige. And then with a the Type R, you could get, um, I think, a, a GT version of the Type R, um, as well as a standard one, and then the Sport line, which deleted the massive rear spoiler. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of those big spoilers myself. You know, it's just a bit too extra for somebody like me. But anyway, yes, it, it's, it's a very nice car. This one has done 50,000 miles in less than three years, and it feels still really new, which is, you know, feet to the engineering that is actually behind something like this. I'd love to have a go, actually, in the current generation Civic, the Mark 11, uh, because that looks like a really nice car, even though it's significantly more expensive than one of these. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more last-minute videos.